Why is coding important and why is it important for children to actually be exposed to it? At its root, coding allows an individual to create, to create anything that they want and anything that they can make up in their own minds. If Gemma wasn't exposed to coding, then she most certainly wouldn't be on the cover of Seventeen magazine last month with the US Michelle Obama. There are many benefits to learning how to code, apart from actually just learning a very valuable technical skill that can get you a job that pays a lot of money or enable you to start your own company. Problem solving is a huge skill for a child to learn from a very young age. Coding encourages a person to identify a problem and actually work their way through and solving it. Patience and perseverance is hugely important no matter what you do in life, and coding teaches children that as well. You're not going to build something straight away or immediately, you're going to have problems, you're going to have bugs, and you're going to have challenges, and you have to have patience to work through them. But one of the most important things to me and what we really are passionate about is that learning how to code teaches young people digital confidence. Steve Jobs said that learning code lets everyone know that everything in the world was weighed by someone who's no smarter than you. So for a child to realize that at the age of seven, eight, nine, 10, or 11, that they can actually create what's the world around them is hugely important and beneficial for their future lives. We hear a lot in the media or in policy and even in pop culture with series like Silicon Valley about the digital skills gap. So I won't go into huge depth about it because I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Even I, after working with the international coding charity, we struggled to hire a programmer for four months and we've only just hired one. 45% of IT execs are facing these problems. In Europe, there's going to be expected to be a 900,000 uh, 900, shortfall of IT skilled professionals by 2020. And in America, that's one million. But really, what's almost more important than the digital skills gap and the lack of skilled programmers and, and coders in the world is that there's a huge diversity problem in the industry as well. We hear about the lack of women in technology and the lack of female programmers quite often, but women actually hold less than 25% of STEM jobs. Women, um, women receive 60% of all bachelor degrees, but only 13% of computer science degrees, which has been declining steadily since 1984. One interesting study by GitHub showed that women's code, were, women's code was, um, what women's pull requests were approved by 78% compared to 76% of men's code, unless their gender was actually identifiable. And more importantly as well is the lack of diversity from minorities. Only 4.1% of American graduates from computer science are black. And yet in Europe, we have over 4 million unemployed uh, young people under the age of 25. So what's the idea? Coder Dojo is a global movement of free programming clubs for children between the ages of seven and 17. Six years ago, James Welton was a 15-year-old student in Cork in Ireland, and he was a self-taught programmer. He taught himself how to program since the age of 11 or 12. And he became the first person in the world to hack into the iPod Nano. He wrote a blog about it, went to bed, and the next morning it had exploded. He had people calling him, asking, how did you learn that? He went into school the next day, and all his students were saying, how did you learn how to hack? I want to learn how to do that. So he started a very simple club in his secondary school in Cork to teach his fellow peers and students how to build basic websites. When he finished school later that year, he wasn't allowed to continue the club. Later on, he met Bill Liao, and together they thought that this concept of one coding club for students at a young age could be something so much more than just in one school in Cork. So Coder Dojo was born. This is a club, this is the dojo in Milan. It was the first dojo in Italy, and there's now over 100 clubs there. But if you look quite closely at the picture as well, you might notice that there's not a huge amount of girls. There are only about six or so out of, out of 20. So even in Coder Dojo, we are still having a problem where we're not attracting enough young girls into dojos. Globally, about 30%, 32% of all attendees in clubs are girls, the rest are boys. Here is another dojo, this is the one in New York taken last year. And if you look closely again, what's really different and unique about Coder Dojo and totally different from a school setting is that there's people of all different ages learning together. You can see an elderly woman up front being actually taught by, by a young boy. Um, you can see young girls and boys who would not be in the same class together, their ages range. Coder Dojo is for kids between the ages of seven and 17, and that's a really unique experience for children to have because it's not something they get anywhere else. We hear a lot these days about coding in the curriculum and how Europe needs to take action to encourage 
more countries to actually introduce coding from a young age. And strides have been made with countries like Estonia and the UK introducing it for all pupils. However, Coder Dojo is fundamentally different. We are an outside school, informal club for children who have that passion and interest in technology, who want to learn how to create at a deeper, more fundamental level. People always ask me if, you know, if, if coding was introduced into every school in the world tomorrow, would there be a need for Coder Dojo? And absolutely. You know, in your PE or, or exercise class in school, you might learn how to play football. If you have a real interest in football, you're going to go and join your football club. And that's what Coder Dojo is. It's coding clubs that are fun and social for children. In terms of what children actually learn and the technologies that they're exposed to, it's, there's a huge vast. Typically, they'll start with HTML, CSS, or Scratch, and then they'll move on to much more complex technologies from JavaScript, app development, game development, um, into hardware, Arduinos, or Raspberry Pis. The model of Coder Dojo, and this is why I'm really excited to be here, is that anyone in the world can start a club. It's entirely free for children. It's entirely free for the person to attend as well, if possible. Every club starts with a champion, and the champion is the individual, almost the project manager of a club. I champion a dojo back in Dublin. I'm not a programmer. You don't need to be a programmer to actually take the initiative to start. The champion finds a team of mentors. Most of them should be technically skilled, or at least they don't have to be working software engineers, but they should have basic understanding. They find a venue, which can be anything from a library, a canteen, a school, an office, um, and then they get resources and actually plan the dojo. We have a whole open source wiki of content available that's been curated by, by mentors all around the world who've set up clubs, and then the dojo is born. Our impact, we have, in less than five years, um, there's been over 965 clubs started um, in 66 countries as of yesterday because we verified our first dojo in Samoa. And there are over 40,000 young people learning how to code through the Coder Dojo movement as of today. It started as an Irish-born initiative and an idea, but it's become hugely global in less than five years. And this summer will mark the fifth birthday of the movement. But our ambition is much bigger. Our ambition is for 50-50 gender ratios in dojos. A number of dojos are doing special initiatives, like this picture here is from a, a Belgian dojo where they ran a specific girls-only club. The idea behind that is to give younger girls the confidence to come in to learn the basic elements of coding and then go back into the, into the regular club. We find that girls who are in the age of 12 and 13 tend to drop off, and that's something that we're really trying to tackle because that's a really pivotal age for anyone. We also want to expand the amount of clubs in underserved regions and countries. We verified our first club in Madagascar last year and our first club in Kenya last month. So it's great that we actually are taking steps to achieve this. In terms of our actual impact, children every day in dojos are learning how to change their world. Lauren on the left holding the little robot, she became the EU Digital Girl of the Year 2014. She joined her local dojo in Wicklow in Ireland when she was 11 where she initially learned how to build websites and play with Scratch. She built a website that was all about um, what to do if you were being bullied, what to do if you were uh, lonely. It was tips for kids, cool, cool kids tips, was what she called it. <laughs> and here we have Neve Scanlon in the left. She became the EU Digital Girl of the Year last year, the second Coder Dojo girl in, in, uh, in succession to actually win this title. Neve developed an app where you could locate your nearest e-car charging station. Her dad wanted to buy an e-car, an electric car back in Ireland, but there was no app that told you where your local charging point was, but also more importantly, whether or not that charging point was actually busy. So there was no point in her dad buying this car if the car was about to run out of power and you know, there was no station nearby. So she went to the national electric electricity provider and convinced them to share the data with her, and then she built this app. In terms of our area's focus, what we're trying to do is actually scale globally, build a more robust infrastructure for all the clubs around the world, and also focus on developing the content and resources. I'm really excited to introduce Antonis, who is one of our ambassadors here in Lithuania and has been doing amazing stuff for Coder Dojo. We're about to hit 1,000 dojos, so wouldn't it be really exciting if that 1,000 club was here in Lithuania? So Antonis, you'd like to come up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina, for, for your presentation. And I'm, I'm really honored to be a Coder Dojo ambassador 
in Lithuania, and also we, we managed to also secure Belarus and Ukraine. So we're very exciting for next year, but if, if we were to look at this year, uh, you know, life without technology for, for young kids is not even possible anymore. So I decided that in Lithuania we don't have enough uh, momentum, enough uh, participation of, of young kids, especially girls, with technology. So why not become the ambassador here in Lithuania and have, a, have clubs that teach kids coding for free? It doesn't cost you anything. You can come in, learn and get confidence and learn to run machines instead of the machines running you. So the sooner we do that, the, the, the better we can do. And, and that's what Kodo Dojo is for me. Okay, we got a... It's cool, that's one rule, right? So what we went and what we started to do is approach libraries. My team called all the libraries in Lithuania and, and sent them a message and asked, Will you host an event? So we had amazing success, and 60 libraries already agreed to hold a, a first sort of introduction training camp. And we've had so many volunteers as well, people, young professionals, for no pay, offering their time, teaching young kids how to, go, how to code and how to get confidence. So our mentors are are really incredible and I'm, I'm very grateful to them that there's so many people in Lithuania who are happy to provide their time. And time is money, believe me. So it's been, it's been ex extremely successful as a start. We've had already over a thousand participants and we plan to have 50 events this year in Lithuania. We already have 10 clubs, 10 dojos, which are permanent. And this is the key, is to get local champions who are prepared to teach kids every week or every month. So there's continuation and, and things can, can keep uh, running that way. But achievement so far, and this is all, all my team doing this incredible work, 24 events already have been very successful. And, and sometimes we have 50 kids registering and 150 kids turn up. It's, it's not easy every now and again because the demand is very high. So we can see in Lithuania we're underachieving to create confidence and knowledge and to offer knowledge to young kids, to young girls from seven years old to understand how to code. So we can see there's a big gap and that's very good that we found out because you know, I get bored sometimes in the European Parliament where things take 10 years to get something done here, we can have a young girl, seven years old, that's never coded, and she can build a website on the first day. So we get a result within two hours. We can get someone confident, and I really believe about this. People need confidence. How do people become successful? They become confident in terms of they know what they need to do. They know how to code. They know how things work. And that gives them confidence to then create something. This is an essential part of it, and that's what we're doing. We're building confidence of young children, young girls, all around Lithuania, to believe in themselves, to change the world. We're giving them the power. And now we'll, we'll show this girl, young girl, Eister, who built her first website. She, she was able to do that within two hours. That can be a, a small thing, but she's just seven years old. And we've already established nine clubs. The tenth one is about to open as well. And the, the, I think the future in Lithuania is 15 clubs. That was our target. 15 dojos in Lithuania working all the time where, where parents can bring their kids. Kids can learn, start, start something very simple and just have the confidence to code, confidence to create. So I'm extremely grateful that we've uh, managed to get so many participants. Ultimately, I think we, we can really train up 10,000 kids without the government costing any money. That, that should be our goal in Lithuania over, over the next few years. 
And if we can have 10,000 kids, for sure, a few will become very successful and hopefully create a really big company, create an Uber, or create something that we haven't even thought about yet. You know, th th this is the key. This is the only way you can get kids to believe and dream about something when they're very young, to have their own startup to change the world. This is all it's about, and I know that's the only way to do it, because we need more and more young people who believe that coding is just like reading. Coding and understanding how things work is just like reading. That's all it is. We need to get parents on board too. We need parents to believe in it. So parents need to be active. They need to have enough time to bring their kids to these clubs. This is also going to be very important. Also volunteers. We need more volunteers. So if any of you are, are interested, please go to Coda, Coda Dojo website in Lithuania. Register. Help us out. Or create your own dojo. Become the champion. It will also look good on your CV. It, I think it's, it can be a win-win. Where you can be the champion of, of the club in your own region or your own city. And you can... Uh, you can even really help. Plus, you can have some kids that you, you really can see growing up. But I'm very grateful because we have people from IBM, from, from all companies, from Microsoft. We've got people from Vinted who are helping out. So I'm re really, really grateful by the, the amount of talent that, that, we, we're, that we're doing so, so well. And this is a... Can we get... We need to get some voice, music. So we'll see, because Luruda, a little town where kids, the demand is just there. They just turn up. They love to learn. They already get a, a certificate. They can see they've already progressed in two hours and achieved so much. And this is my vision of Lithuania, where, where I, we can show, like politicians, we can show that in Lithuania, young kids are learning how to code. So the future is very bright, and you can have a lot of startups. You can keep coming and, and opening your companies here. And we will have the superpower of our young people who will help you to achieve the goals you have in the corporate, in startup, in investment. This is the vision of Lithuania. Where young people are learning, learning to be fluent at coding. That should be our goal, and that should be a goal for our country. So I'm, again, very grateful for our volunteers, because without them, there wouldn't be any, any opportunity. So the team is always less ambitious than I am, but I'm always I'm saying 10,000, they say 6,000. Say 100 events, they say 50 events. Uh, say 50 clubs, they say 15 clubs. So we can really change it. And I would say 60% girls, 40% boys coding. Uh, you know, they say 40, 60. So I think it's all about ambition. And if we can all be ambitious, if we can all do our own part, for example, we have one mentor Laura, who's going to open her own dojo for girls only. 
because sometimes girls can be a bit more nervous maybe early until they get their confidence, until they start running the country like here in Lithuania, right? They, they need some mentoring. So Lara, who's so active, who's giving her time all the time, is going to have her own dojo for girls only. And I think that's a, that's a wonderful idea. And I think that's the sort of freedom that we offer. So people can come with ideas. They can say, maybe we're doing something wrong. Maybe we need to teach some other things, then you can participate. There's no ownership, no one owns it. There's no company behind it, it's all free. It's, it's all a matter of putting in your own time. And we tr try to provide the resources that we can uh, from my foundation. You know, our big goal in Europe that, that we've been working towards is the digital single market. And for the digital single market, we need people who are digital. We need all the people who are digital. We need a sharing economy. It's all happening. This is the future, and I think Lithuania can be a very flexible country for the sharing economy. If we look at Uber, Uber came during our Switch conference that we hold here, and Switch will be held again uh, September 8th to 9th this year, which, which will be a free event. Switch. During Switch, they, we introduced them to the mayor. Within two weeks, they were up and running. So it's a, it's a world record, and that should be put in the World Guinness Book of Records, that Uber had the fastest start ever in Lithuania. But I want more. This week, I have a guy flying in from Singapore who does drones as waiters. I want us to be the drone capital. I, I want us to be capital of the sharing economy of the whole world, of alternative currencies. This is the ambition that we need to have. And for that ambition, we need young kids to push us forward, to push us forward, get the momentum, and have a win. That's the only way to go. And that's the digital single market, that we'll all be able to participate in the biggest market in the world. The European market is the biggest, the richest market in the world. At the moment, there's a lot of barriers, and America does have an advantage. But in the future, if we do have the dream come true, which we already have a single market on the economy front. Now we need a single market on the digital front. And then we will have the opportunity to, to, to really be wealthy, to, to have a very good lifestyle in Lithuania. And I'm, I'm really excited that Kodo Dojo Lithuania is on the map with the whole world. And really, we will try to have the thousandth dojo here. That would be a big celebration. We'll probably have a public holiday then for that. <laughs> and what's the big announcement we have to make? Is during Switch, all the kids that have participated in dojos will be invited to come, and more kids will come, and Lithuania will have a world record for the largest computer programming lesson simultaneously. We will be on a map, and that's the ambition we need in Lithuania. We want to have the world record for the most amount of kids learning how to code at the same time. It'll happen right here in Vilnius, September 8th. We're going to be all world record holders. So we need more mentors, more kids, more parents to get involved. Back us up, and let's all have a win. Let's create a world record for Lithuania. Thank you very much.